Jets, Nicole Brown. behind a lot of Walking Dead episodes and Fear the Walking Dead episodes that you guys love, so I need y'all to give them a little more love than that. Okay, um, Brandon, also, um, what are the biggest dangers to the this year? Is it the walkers? Is it other people? Is it the location? Because did I say something nuclear? Did I say a nuclear sign? <laughs> there may have been some nuclear sign. Did y'all say that? 
that? Just me? Y'all only see the new? Okay. All right. Y'all paying attention. Tell us about what you think is the this year. I mean, I think it's all of the above. Um, you know, we saw our group head out with that mission to help people, and they're going to find it's, it's a lot harder than just picking up a walkie and saying they want to help. Um, you know, a lot of teasers in that trailer, but they find themselves in a, a strange place with some kind of mysterious things going on around them. And uh, you did see that nuclear sign, and they, they may come up against a, a walker threat that is unlike any they've ever seen and a walker threat that might be able to hurt them beyond just a bite. So, uh, perhaps they're some of the most dangerous walkers they've faced yet. I mean, that's what happens with nuclear, y'all. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lenny. Hey, Lenny. Hey, Dolly. Oh, hey. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Now, Morgan is the one that came up with the idea of helping people, and he made the decision to go on this mission. Is he surprised by what he's encountering out there in the streets? Um, he's kind of surprised. Yeah, and he's kind of surprised by people's reluctance. I think he thought he would offer help, people would take help, he would feel good about himself. End of story. Um, it's not quite worked out that way, but, uh, you know, we've got to a point now in our storytelling that we know how to survive. We yeah. have to figure out what the next step is. And we've got skillful at surviving. We want to share that with other people and figure out what we're going to be in the future. Um, but it's not easy, as, you know, Nothing is easy in this world, and um, so they, you know, they face some trials and tribulations. But yeah. you know, I, I can only say so much. There's so, <laughs> there's so much I want to tell you, but I can't because I get fired. So, <laughs> but see me after. <laughs> Alicia, right? Walking Dead, so you have filmed now in Vancouver, LA, Mexico, and Texas. What has been your favorite place to film so far? I'm gonna be basic and say LA. <laughs> <laughs> because that's like where I live, but right. I'm like really, it was home. I was like, oh my god, I get to like go home now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's all been incredibly interesting though. Every, every place has been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to bump over to Coleman because I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to go to our newest, youngest cast member. Hi, Alexa. How are you? How are you, Pumpkin? Good. I'm good. Did you know when you came on the show that it was going to end up being this long of a run for you so far? I didn't. I actually, when I came on the show, I thought I was going to do a few episodes. And then after episode eight, you know, I got the script for nine and then ten and then it kept going. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then, yeah, I just thought it was going to be a few episodes, so it's, you know, I'm really grateful that it turned out to be what it is, and I love it. And, you know, she's very poised, but she's 12, you guys. She's 12, so none of us are doing enough with our lives. <laughs> How are you juggling doing this show and schoolwork? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, a lot of, you know, all young actors out there have to find a good balance between school and their work, and I actually all actors on shows we do our school you know in between scenes and stuff and we have set teachers that really help us and I think it's just about finding a good balance in between to stay focused for each which I think I've kind of found. Yeah when I was 12 I couldn't even string our sentence together so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go down to Jenna so she can fix this for me. Hi Jenna. Hi Yes! a lot of medical knowledge we're finding out she's the one that saved them last year when they had that little bug that was going to kill them all um and this year she's playing nurse to uh luciana has that little cut do you study medical stuff to prepare for playing a medical person on television um, i did go and this june was a trauma nurse um so in austin i went to the head of the trauma department at the hospital and got with him and asked many many questions to get myself oriented to the bigger, you know, I mean, I'm a mother in real life, so yeah. I'm a mini baby nurse in a way, because you do have to deal with things when you're raising children, but um, but the big stuff that is specifically trauma-oriented, and uh, yeah, I just feel better when I obviously have some sense of, yeah. yeah. Hey, Denai? I heard there's going to be an accordion concert. <laughs> do, you, do you play accordion? Well, you know, I think Luciana really loves music and the apocalypse. I mean, when she goes in the dark place, that's where she goes to. So I think I want to take it to the next level. I'm just going to leave you with that. Hi, Coleman. Hi. Hi, Bunny. Um, so, you guys may not know this, you may know. Coleman is an actor, but he's also a playwright, a director. Woo! You directed last season. You directed 
directed again this season. What can you tell us about acting versus directing? I think hopefully one feeds the other. I think that um, possibly I become a better collaborator as an actor when I'm on when I switch hats from being a director. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, because I mean, to be very honest, a lot of times actors, we're sort of put in our own little bubble and we're putting our little cages and come out and do the scenes. And then we're like wondering, why is this taking so long? Because, <laughs> but as a director, you know why it's taking so long. There's a lot that needs to be done and you just need to chill <laughs> and be generous. But also I think that it's a, it just feeds different parts of my, um, my mind. I think I'm, I'm always a little outspoken. I have an opinion about you. You know, I, I, you know, I think as a creative artist, I think, honestly, I think all of us on this stage, everyone is such multidisciplined, multi hyphenate artists that we're always um, interested in more than just what we're doing as an actor. We're interested in the whole experience. And so I think, you know, mine plays out in being a director. Um, you have a, a really scary reintroduction with uh, Daniel Salazar with uh, Ruben Blades down there. Can you guys tell us what that scene was like? What was it like for you, Ruben, coming back? And did you know you were coming back? And how come you don't die? I have a shot. He just lives. I'll just say that Ruben Blades, uh, Daniel Salazar, is the Terminator. <laughs> uh, uh, hi. Hi. I'm very, very happy to be here. I, I'm really thankful to everyone for the support of the character, Daniel Salazar. And um, I, I wasn't, I never, I'm never sure what's going to happen. You know? <laughs> and I think no one is. I mean, you know, the, the show, all of a sudden you're there and then you're not. The thing with Salazar is like he's like a couple, you know. He's <laughs> very hard to kill. Um, so he's a survivor. So he keeps on going. Um, I'm just very, very happy to, to be back with the, my old we're friends. We're happy to have you friends. back. Yeah, we're happy no, I thank you all, really, for keeping Salazar. Yeah. Thank you, I met Ray, and he um, The group this year is going to be using Al's takes to try to find people and help them. So you're not just, your character's not just observing, you're now a part of the action. Are you still going to be observing? Yeah, I think she was really trained to be more of an impartial witness, and she's had to come out of that a bit this season, and it's, it's a different kind of meaning. It's more direct and immediate to use the tapes to find people that are still with us. Yeah, there's a question I want to ask you. This is a personal question I want to know. You have been a part of a lot of fantastic uh, Twilight, Lost, all of these wonderful yeah. What is it like? How does it compare to the Fear the Walking Dead or the Walking Dead fandom? I mean, basically the way I set about my career is I only do shows, <laughs> no job security, and plane crashes. <laughs> <laughs> it really is in line with those values. Yeah, well speaking of a plane, you know, you, you operate a lot of machinery on Fear the Walking Dead. Is it possible that Al's on that plane, flying that plane, that we saw almost crash? Conceivable. Just saying. But she would have had nothing to do with the crash. The crash. <laughs> that feels like a spoiler, so I'm going to move on. Um, <laughs> Garrett. Hi, Garrett. Hey, Beth. Uh, yes. <laughs> do you have a favorite John Dory saying? Saying? Yes, yeah, something that you say is John Dory. Oh, That's your favorite. Know, I mean, John Dory seems to have some favorite to say. What would you say is one of John Dory's favorites? <laughs> He loves, he loves food-based epithets. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Oh, I was happy. We'll see. Um, and also I saw, listen you guys, you know I'm a shipper, so I saw some delicious kisses between you and June, <laughs> Naomi, Laura. You know, it's June now. Oh, it's yeah. June. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm oh, June. She's June. So I saw some delicious kisses between June and John. Will there be some more interesting places where we find romance? You mean like locations? Yeah, I don't know. Answer the question how you want to answer the question. Remember children are in the room. A lot of traps. <laughs> that, that's like that old, what is that? The newlywed game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a little rough. I, I worded it bad, but are there interesting yeah. locations where you find I guess so. Is, is there an uninteresting location? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Sorokin. <laughs> Hi, Austin. I'm
I thought I was gonna get high pumpkin, but pumpkin, hi pumpkin. Okay, so the last time we saw you, Daryl told you to leave and never come back, and then you went off. And now we see you. Can you tell us a little bit about how he got to Texas and did he find Sherry on the way? Oh. <laughs> this is the first part. It's a spoiler. I hope you found Sherry on the way. How did you get to Texas? Can you tell us anything about that journey? It was a long, long journey. <laughs> and I now have a beard. A beard. It's about all I can say. Okay, well, you can't tell me this. You are from Austin, Texas. I am. So what is it like filming in your own backyard? It's the best. Mm -hmm. It's the best feeling ever. It's, it's come full circle. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of trippy, you know? Like, I started off acting there, and now I'm back. <laughs> I'm like something that's, uh, it's a big show, you know, so it's, it's nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to some general group questions. Anybody can get in where they want to get in. Um, what do you guys do on set between takes to pass the time? We make um, pop videos. Uh, I think you're lying. <laughs> they make dance videos. No, it's true. Is it true? Time. Oh, yeah. They spend all of their time dancing <laughs> to music. Like and these. filming it. That's what they do. Um, do these live somewhere online where I can see them? Instagram videos? What are these? Can I get a Dropbox of somebody sending me some videos? <laughs> oh, my God, somebody sent it to me. Well, I'm thinking now you're going to be like a hair and makeup trailer as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, hair and makeup trailer. Like Friday, Friday, Friday lunchtime. Friday, the, the way that we deal with it, because the entire crew watches do this thing, we just tell them, this is content for when it's ready. Like, right? This is, we're going to save this content. <laughs> and then it never gets pushed out. It's just yeah. on, on phones. Um, this is another, just a random question. What is your favorite craft services food? <laughs> Gummy bears. Gummy bears. I want to go down the line. Everybody's got one. I like the pretzel peanut butter fossils. You say a brand, they might send it to you. You might want to rethink your answer. <laughs> Skinny pop popcorn. <laughs> Anybody else? Like the kind bar. These are the kind yeah, pop is really. Yeah. Andrew likes skinny pop popcorn too. Pop. Yes. You know there was. Uh, this is this is about catering rather than craft services. Yeah. Craft services is uh, you know your red vines, your M and M's, that sort of thing. Yes. Catering is more like lunch. I will say we were deep in Texas. Deep Texas. Deep in the heart. It was uh, 140 degrees out, <laughs> and catering made something with sea urchin in it. Nope. Which I thought was an aggressive play. It was aggressive. I was very aggressive. And you know what? They pulled it off. <laughs> it was there, there was no illness. Blown in from Japan. Blown in from, from Japan. Y'all got a budget. <laughs> yeah, this was a special meal. We eat well. But I, I, thought, I was impressed. I'll just say that. As uh, Scott to have your attention, um, we see that Morgan and Austin crossed over. Mm -hmm. Will there be any more other crossovers? And is there anything you can tell us about the greater Walking Dead universe? Uh, uh, Mr. Hardwick uh, made, made a lot of fun of me this weekend. Because you don't give a lot of stuff up. Because I don't give don't. a lot of it. But this is me. But this is what I'll say. This is WonderCon. We're together. Give us yeah. something. lame and then I'll say something super cool. Awesome. Uh, the super lame thing is uh, we might have like a gigantic announcement this week, but notice I use the word might. Uh, <laughs> and Scott, your this week ends up being like six months down the line. I know you're this week. No, but, but let, me say the super, let me say the super cool thing. In the first half of this season on Fear the Walking Dead, uh, we tell uh, a beautiful and action-packed and hilarious and sad and explosive kind of story that actually has to do a lot with one of the characters here, but very much uh, a great deal having to do with another peek into the greater universe of The Walking Dead that really puts uh, a character. Uh, and that character's Some famous. of the things that have been going on <laughs> on this show and on The Walking Dead. So, okay. there's that, and then as far as seeing other crossovers, there is uh, some very, very... The, the thing with Dwight, the thing with Morgan is very unusual, but there's something really cool about the past, some of these characters that we're going to see. There's a connection between... Rick Grimes, I say, it's a connection. Okay, um, Mikey. Hi, Mikey. Hi. Um, 
What are the challenges and the best parts of filming in Texas for you? Well, as a director. I mean, I think, I think one of the best parts is actually our crew. You know, we have a we have a, a huge uh, portion of our crew is is from from Austin, and they are fantastic, and they are the top. Um, what that does is is make our job really difficult because now that we found out what everybody can do uh, in an entrance, it's got to be writing to the maximum. Well, uh, it's a it's a good that turns into a bad, but I think it's it's uh, being being there and having those kind of filmmakers with us allows us to really increase the, the size and the depth that we tell the stories on and, and I think you're going to feel it. Yeah, and, and, I mean we start to you. day one of prep on an episode, generally the response is the script is impossible to produce and then by like day three it's like okay maybe and then by the end of prep they're like yeah we got it, we got it, we got it. We got it. Alicia. Um, we've seen you go from being a high schooler to being like this badass. Is there a certain scene or shot or, or stunt that you've done over the years that you've been on the show that you're like, that's my favorite? That was the most fun to do. Or even the most difficult? Um, gosh, I feel so much. I'm just like, it feels like every week is a new challenge. I'm like, really guys, what did I ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think when we were in the basement last season, it wasn't so much that the stunt was hard um, because we were just in the basement, but I do remember having to hold my breath a lot and being really not good at it anymore. Um, but the conditions around it were really tough. Usually it's just a, a layering of things. It's like there's a storm going on and you're in the basement and it's flooding and you're like, both gonna die. Like, it's just, compounded it stunt in itself. So I think that's what pops out the most. But this season there is definitely some pretty gnarly stuff. Yeah. I want to know, you guys are sharing the cast with Coleman, but he's also directed you. So I would love to know what he's like as a director. What is it like to have a castmate director and to have this wonderful man direct you? Anybody, jump in. We really love him. <laughs> you know, what's really great is that he knows us really well as actors and he see, he has seen our journeys, you know, like face to face. So when he directs us, it's like, it's the next level uh, because usually we have guest directors, but now we have a director that is one of us <laughs> and that I guess the universe really well. So it was a really cool experience. And Coleman's such a... You have such a calm director too. Yes. Which is like what's so lovely is he's able to just, as you said, as he knows the world so well, able to just express it, what he needs with clarity and just so calm and just has a great relationship with the crew, so it just, just falls into place. It's so nice. And he keeps everybody smiling. Yeah. And he keeps yes. everybody happy and he's incredibly inclusive and his directing style is just to come up and give you something to try. Yeah. Why don't you just go, how about this? Why don't we do this scene purple? And you'll go, well, no idea what that means. <laughs> and it turns out to be brilliant. It's a, it's a lovely um, uh, opportunity that the, um, the producers and the execs offer up to the, the cast to step on the other side and um, expand the way that they tell stories. And Coleman has led from the front and it's it's beautiful, it's lovely. I love, I love the episodes when Coleman's the one in charge. And just to, you know, to say too, Coleman did a fantastic job with the episode he directed last season, episode 412. Uh, but if you thought that was good, the one he did this year will really blow you away. It is... We, we said we're going to make it bigger, <laughs> we're going to make it more emotional, <laughs> and, uh, and we delivered. We can't wait for people to see it. And no director is as, as good unless you have the, the support from every single person. I have, have mentorship from like Michael Satrazimus, and, and if everyone, you know, it's really, honestly, it's like, it's just uh, indicative of, of our company and our crew, yeah. that they're all rallying behind you, truly. They're really rallying behind you because they want, it means something to them to make sure you have a great experience, you have a great episode, so everyone, I, I personally really thank everybody. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you what's amazing is to, is to see somebody get re-inspired and be so excited to create on a, on a much larger level and tell a story, and, and that's something 
that is so exciting to see, and, uh, and Coleman represents that in, in every possible way. You guys, so, get warm fuzzies. Thing. This is warm fuzzy time. That was lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you guys who have questions, can you line up? Now we're going to go to you in a second. I want to give you a little time to get up in here. So get in. If you guys see the mic, get up there. Um, I have one more question for Ruben. What has it been like for you? Yes, you. What has it been like for you to pop in and pop out? Like, is it like riding a bike coming back? You're in the city this time, Ruben? What is that like, that transition for you? Um, I, I, I pretty much understand Salazar, mm -hmm. so I can I can uh, I can go back very easily to, to what he is. Uh, the, what what it is a little difficult at times is that the writers always know more than you do, <laughs> and uh, when you do the uh, when you do that jump, you have to sort of go with your what's written, but at the same time what the memory of the character is. Right. So that even when you give out the line, you're still holding on to something or, or trying to give it an, more of an ambiguous uh, 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 delivery so that you can always retreat or go back once you understand what has really happened. Because ain't no more. I mean, I have a backstory that I wrote for myself. <laughs> so I use that, you know. But it's with these people trying to get anything out of them, it's like pulling teeth out of them. Especially Scott Gimple, my lord. Very, very quiet, especially this guy. Scott Gimple, I'm sorry. Wasn't it fair? I think it's true. All right, let's go. It's my friend, I can say that. Okay, let's go to the questions. Who has a question? What's your name? Hi, my name is Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi. Um, my question is for Maggie. Um, we see Maggie always, um, or Althea, sorry, um, trying to get everybody else's backstory. When are we going to get hers? Are we going to get it this season? I know you're not really allowed to give away spoilers, but um, I'm really she interested to, to see um, Althea's backstory. And I think we can safely say some of the events of the season force Al to reckon with some of her past. Yeah, yeah and I, I'd also add that we're also going to see a lot of Al's present story and her taking some kind of unexpected leaps. And your, your shirt says? It says, if Althea dies, I riot. <laughs> Uh, Al, did I cut someone off? Okay. Was that? Someone, was it you? Did you have well, the, the, yes. We will learn more about her than we ever have this season. Um, okay. And she will become more vulnerable than she's ever been. I mean, she's, I think, one of the most guarded characters of the Walking Dead universe. Uh, mm -hmm. she, she's like in a ball, but she opens up a little bit this season. and. Uh, and we're going to start seeing her backstory eventually, which is rather epic. Ooh, that's a school. Hello, sir. What's your name? Hi, my name is Brendan, and I've actually seen the panel last year, and it's so great to see you all again. You too. Uh, especially Alicia, like, my friend Casey is a big fan, so she really loves you. Oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, you're welcome. No. <laughs> All right, so my question is, as time has passed on since Madison's death, uh, how has Alicia developed as a leader, and has she seen Morgan as a sort of guide or mentor in her journey? Morgan and Alicia's pairing is very interesting. Um, I think they both are trying to wrestle with the same philosophical questions of, you know, what is the reason to keep going? Why do we want to keep going? Like, what's the point? And I think she does seem as, as a sort of mentor because he does take her under a wing and, and try to convince her that there is more to this and that, you know, we have to do better things to make up for what we've done and that it can be a really positive thing to do and it can give you hope and it can give you a sense of reason and purpose. Um, so definitely that and I think she needs it too, everything she's been through. She's lost so many people and she's become very much this guarded warrior and that's what she prides herself in and that's what she thinks is the only thing she can do which is just fight and kill and I think he's one of the people that knows there's so much more to that and wants to get her to start trusting again. Yeah. Good answer. 
Hello, dear. Hi. What's your name? Anna. Hi. Uh, so my question's for Alicia, and it's how has all the emotional turmoil that she's been through since season one, you know, losing her family pretty much, um, really is going to help her become a bigger leader this season. And by the way, Alicia, I, I love you. So much. Oh <laughs> so much. I just love it so much. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> um, I. It's been a real delight to be with a character this long and and see her grow from being a high school student to becoming this fierce warrior. And and although it's there's so much tragedy that's happened, I think it's given her all the tools to be such a capable young woman and she's obviously so like can do the apocalypse <laughs> but um, I think really what we'll see more in going forward is her trying to reason with what to do next and like is there hope and like that's what really will make her a better person and leader throughout it all because if you can't connect to the humanity of it then I don't think you've got anything left. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Gabby. Hi, Gabby. And my question's for Alicia. Again. <laughs> now, now, listen. A whole bunch of people up here. I love her too, but come on, y'all. All right, go ahead. It's the most. They love the most. Let's go. Uh, I just want to start by saying that I love you, Alicia. And my question is, um, your character obviously is a badass, and she's done so many great things, but she's also suffered a lot. So of all of this emotional turmoil that she's faced, what about her character do you see in yourself? Uh, I was talking about this earlier. It's a funny one, because I've played this character for such a long time, and often I find as an actor you draw upon the things that are already within you, um, especially with this character because she is like similar in age and kind of a, she, I've grown up with her in a sense. Um, and a lot of the environment around you that you're in does determine how you're how you're drawing upon different things. And so it's it's tricky sometimes those lines start to merge and, and you are extracting really big parts of your emotional well and you're thinking like, wait, is this me or is this like like what's different, what's the same, and I mean, in response though, I think I become very different when I'm off the job, like, I mean, I bows in my hair, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone, like, all out at the opposite end. Um, but yeah, I think there are a lot of similarities, but, you know, I try and keep work as work, too. Thank you for your question. Next question? Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, uh, thank uh, the cast for being here. Fear has the most established like pop culture icons in their version of the show compared to the Walking Dead series. So a lot of the people up there I've looked at and admired throughout their years. My question is from Mr. Gimble is uh, in terms of the timeline, considering the two significant time jumps since Morgan left, where does fear stand in years or months behind where Walking Dead is? Great question. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Damn it. Uh, don't have my computer with me. Uh, Morgan uh, left uh, Virginia about... You're already shaking your head. Because I feel like you're stalling. <laughs> Only. Uh, about a couple months after the events of uh, episode 816. Okay. Um, on Fear of the Walking Dead, maybe a few more months have, expi uh, have transpired. And... Uh, Dwight also left uh, at 8.16. Stop. Took the long way. So, uh, a few more months at the beginning of this season, I put it to Andrew and Ian. He punts it. He just punts it. Come on. He just punts it. We've got a calendar in our office with the exact date and year. Um, 
we go. Down to the minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It, I, I, the, the basic idea, though, is that they don't, they may not be running completely... Oh, no. Fear the Walking Dead is now significantly behind the timeline of Walking Dead. Walking Dead did jump... Six years, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. There's our, there's our answer. Hello, sir. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. My name is uh, Luke Cheeseman. Nice name. And this question is for Maggie Grace. Maggie Grace. Maggie Grace. Uh, what do your parents think of the show? Because I can't seem to get mine to watch a zombie show. Hi, Luke. <laughs> is he related to you? Yes. Is that your brother? Is that your brother? My cousin. That's your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, cousin, Mr. Cheeseman. <laughs> um, That's adorable. <laughs> I'm like, this could get so much worse so fast. Uh, no, they, they, they like it. They, I, I think they struggle with some of the more violent moments, but they're, they're in. They're hooked, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Luke Cheeseman. That's your last name. Hello, Megan. Hey, what's, y'all. What's your name? <laughs> oh, 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 I don't think. Well, I think I'm Negan, first of all. You are Negan, all right. Yeah, I want right. credit to it. Right? You guys? <laughs> <laughs> What's your question, Negan? Well, I have a question for all of you. Now, Morgan, you once told Jimbo that you can die, you can choose to die whenever you want, right? Yes. <laughs> How would you guys end your life if you were bitten, like Jimbo? Oh. Playing the accordion. <laughs> Anybody else got an answer how they would end it if they were they were facing the end? <laughs> I think we should do it. One of those maybe you know, we usually do. <laughs> I would just want to get a good laugh in before I go. I would want someone to make me laugh. Yeah. Just get a good belly laugh in before it's all over. I, I would just get some lessons with Morgan's, you know. A keto practice because that never ends well. <laughs> so, you know, I would ask for some mentorship before I die. Anybody else? I think I will have a few beers. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to feel it either. Um, hi, honey. What's hi, your name? My name's Maria, hi, and my question is for Coleman. And Big has been a very kind of selfish person, and now with this new mission of helping people, I want to know how Victor does. Oh. Good question. Tune in on June 7th. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, uh, I think that uh, Victor has, um, we've seen uh, the history of Victor, of him, you know, you know, I always say that from the inside, of playing Victor, I can always justify why he's doing something. So when I hear Victor's been selfish, I, I maybe just say, no, he hasn't been. <laughs> he's actually just been really pragmatic and really trying to make the best decision. And then sometimes the group makes a different decision and he has to make another one. <laughs> but I think that he's growing into this group. I think that um, all the events have led him to, um, I don't know, in a way, sort of examining himself through the eyes of uh, the way Madison saw him, as someone who had more kindness and generosity than he even imagined. She always, she was always, you know, so still living in her shadow, and what she set up and set up for the group, and as we're moving on, we become a new family, and what is our mission collectively, and how can we be our better selves? So I think Victor is still, you know, at the core, Victor is Victor, but I think that he's really trying, and he's really, he's really doing his best to try to be his best self. And we'll see what happens on June 2nd. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi. Name's Carlos, a uh, great fan of the show. Great show, love all of you. Uh, my question is, if any one of your characters from Fear the Walking Dead, not necessarily the Walking Dead characters that came over, uh, could tangle with a character from The Walking Dead, who would it be? Uh, Define Tangle. Well, like, you know, we saw in the trailer Salazar meeting ah, Strand. Yeah, yeah, like, okay. yeah, just like straight up, like, who are you? Battle Royale, who are you? A character going to the Walking Dead, not past Walking Dead characters. Althea versus Alpha. Yes! Oh! Yes, man. Great. Yes. Oh. I'd quite like to see uh, Rick 
and John Dory have a kind of go. Western. High noon moment. Sharp see that. Salazar and Negan. Anybody else? Um, I just love Carol. Isn't yeah. she great? I love her with Daryl. I like. Well, I love both of them. I love the whole thing of them. I love everything about the two of them. Yes. Jenny. Yes to them. I That's love Jenna. Jenna's my favorite. You're saying that. I love you. Anybody else? I think I'd like to meet Michelle. Ooh, deny and deny. Yes. I deny and deny. The only person I know that is named Deny too. That would be funny. It causes lots. Deny, of look up. Deny, are you talking about? <laughs> deny to the left. Which deny are you talking about? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> deny, great. Thank you. I'll take that. That's me. <laughs> Anybody else? We good? You good? You ready? You ready? Okay. Hey, great question. Hello. Hello. My name is David, and first I just want to say you guys are amazing. I've loved Walking Dead since the first episode. When Fear premiered, I was so excited, and it's been amazing. Thank you, Scott Kimball, for everything you've done, and everyone in else. Thanks, and everything. Okay. Um, my question is for Lenny. So, huge Morgan fan. Claire was still one of the best episodes ever on television. Thank you very much. Okay. Directed by? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Morgan, as a character, um, would you ever, or do you think he would ever consider having a family again of his own, having another child or another wife or companion with everything he's dealt with? I mean, that other episode with Eastman and just seeing how he went through everything. I can't imagine that he could ever consider it, but at the end of last season, it seemed like he really did want to move forward. And to truly do that would be to have his own family again. I don't know, you know, dude. I think it would be the biggest test for him. I think that the loss of his wife and the loss of his son has defined almost every single decision that Morgan has made um, in the apocalypse. Um, I think he walks with his family, even on a good day and a bad day, with them being right there. I think the journey to um, the possibility of a relationship with somebody else would be the scariest thing that Morgan's ever come across. Um, I, he still wears his wedding ring. As far as he's concerned, he's still married. But also that whole part of him, that part of him, because he, he cares about people, he loves people even, but to be in love for Morgan, I think it will be such a betrayal of his wife and family that um, for it to happen, it would take somebody amazing and it would take Morgan to face demons that he just possibly couldn't bear to look at. I think it would crush him before it would make him, but um, could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great question and great answer. Hi, hon. Hello. What's your name? I'm Maya. I'm Maya. Big fan. And my question goes out to the entire panel. Um, if you were in the Walking Dead universe, what, what weapon would you use and why? What weapon? What weapon. Okay, so you as individuals, if you guys were in the, in the zombie apocalypse, what would you use? I will say that uh, when Rick took on the pit walker uh, that he encountered with the scavengers, uh, I definitely wanted him to use a keyboard at some point. <laughs> it didn't go well, <laughs> but I would try. Anybody else? I said, I want an accordion. And I want to see someone use an accordion as you went. It's a concert later in the season. Did I? Just wait for it. It's fun. <laughs> Else? I, I think I think I would I would just head immediately to the SWAT van, get inside, be barricaded, and I got the guns if I need those. So that's sort of double protection. I think I'll take John Dory's guns. I take John Dory with his guns. Nobody asked. <laughs> Back off, you bet. All right. <laughs> Next question. Hi guys. 
I'd like to say that John Dory has reawakened my cold, dead heart. Uh, and uh, this question's for Jenna Elfman. Uh, how would Dharma react to the Walking Dead? <laughs> <laughs> she'd probably be immune to the virus somehow. I, agree. I think she'd uh, be very supportive of what this group is doing. That's what I think. I think she'd join up with these people right here. <laughs> Hello, sir. Uh, hi, Nicole. Uh, loved you on Drake and Josh. You did. Thank yeah. you. Hey, you guys, my middle name is Nicole, so it's my name too. So don't oh, feel bad. No, it's fine. It happens all the time. Go ahead, here. All right. So uh, love all of you. My question is for Austin. So um, obviously Dwight sticks around a little longer in the comics. Uh, but you know, uh, after leaving The Walking Dead, uh, does any content from what happens? You know, after the point when he left, when he would have left in the comics, does it carry over to Fear? <laughs> I really wish there was a question I could answer. But, uh, tune in on June 2nd. <laughs> that makes me happy. That means some really great stuff is coming. You guys yeah. can't talk about any of this stuff. Like even, you know, I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. Um, so I was wondering, as groups and enemies in both shows get bigger, how does that play out in the interaction between shows and in the world? For example, uh, will we be seeing them face a common enemy? Between the two shows? Good oh. Good question. Well, uh, this, <laughs> uh, this season... I, w I wouldn't classify it as an enemy, but there will be this, uh, beyond Austin, uh, this very interesting commonality, uh, this, this story strand that's going to be furthered on this show that started in The Walking Dead, Ooh. and uh, who knows where it will go, but uh, th that's, the, that's the thing on tap right now, and then, you know, into our 30th or 40th year. Um, <laughs> really going to see a lot more crossover. <laughs> this is sadly our last question. It's it's okay. Okay. Oh, oh, but look oh, what oh, you're wearing. Oh, look oh, who's oh, giving oh, it. Oh, yeah. 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 We just give it up for yeah. you. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> Jasper. Hi. My question is for the whole cast. Um, what would you say, personality-wise, is the biggest difference between yourself and your character in the show? Go down the line quickly. That's um, I'm not as brave as Morgan. <laughs> I'm so much more a girly girl this night. <laughs> I'm not cynical at all. No, he's not. <laughs> um, I would have to be the same as Alicia. I'm a super girly girl, too. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John's a lot more talkative. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> uh, I, I just think June's experienced so much more loss than I personally have um, that that actually then defines it affects your personality and then. Her having been with him and having a rebirth, that's a lot more layers, I think, than I personally have. <laughs> uh, Al's really will come in here into violence. He'll sort of apathetic around it. I don't. It's <laughs> uh, probably braver than I am. Uh, <clears throat> I trust people more than Salazar. <laughs> You guys, this has been an amazing hour of wonderful news about your welcome.